morning. Our reading today is from John 14, 15 through 21, the counselor. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be with you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live and you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father and you are in me and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father and I too will love them and show, them my, show myself to them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The counselor. You know, if you were here last week, we used John chapter 14. This is one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. Um, I have a couple. I, you probably do too. I love John chapter 3 because of John 3.16. I love Romans chapter 8. Uh, I love the 23rd Psalm. I just have my favorites, as you probably do. But I really love this one. And if you were here last week, the opening verses of John chapter 14, I mentioned that we use many times at memorial services because it talks about Jesus coming back to take us to heaven. And we talked about last week him giving us that limousine treatment, comes back to us as Christians and takes us into uh, eternal glory with him. And it's just amazing. Well, the end of this chapter, uh, the Gospel of John, talks about him sending a part of himself, the Holy Spirit, which is the counselor. Now, I love counseling. I wish everybody could have a counselor uh, to get counseling. I really do. I, I have done a lot of counseling myself as a counselor, but also on the other side. When I was in seminary, that was a big part of our program because they don't want the ministers to come into local churches and uh, they're crazy or something like that. You know, they don't want them to be like that. So they work and work with us. And uh, I remember one day sitting there with my counselor and he was a snazzy dresser, kind of like Bobby, just real cool. And uh, he was sitting there, you know, and he had a, a goatee. He was a sharp-looking guy, you know, lots of hair. I was so jealous of him. He was just sitting there. So I sat down. I'd met with him a number of times, and I said, you know what? I think I know what makes Eddie Fulford tick, you know, and he just put his book down and just, you know, just as a counselor, you know, just kind of, you know, and, you know, wanted me to talk. And I said, I think I'm a perfectionist. I think I found that that's probably why I get so tense and anxious at times. And so he just no expression, just looking at me. And then he kind of looked up and down my clothing. Now, I've never been one, except when I've been around Bobby, to get, to get uh, dressed properly. And, uh, and I've never exactly had uh, my hair. I, I mean, I, I know it, it's not parted exactly right, you know. I just, and back when I had more hair. Uh, so I'm sitting there, you know, and he just kind of looked up and down me. I didn't know what he'd say. And he just said, Eddie, you don't look like a perfectionist. <laughs> I remember thinking, I know now why I'm my best doctor. I'm my best counselor physician. You know, I know what's really going on inside of me. I had another time where one of my professors was helping me, and uh, I'll never forget his words. Um, he said, Eddie, he said, you cannot just use your father's faith. He said, you need your own. And I remember thinking, what? And I pondered those thoughts. And I remember going home and looking in the mirror. And I know some of you are going to understand this very well. Have you ever looked in the mirror and then for the first time saw your mom or dad looking back at you? You know, as you've grown up, you know. And I looked in my, the way I wore my shirt and uh, pants and shoes, everything. It was my daddy, you know. And you know the proper response when that happens is, ah! I've become my dad or my mom, you know, just crazy. Counseling can be excellent, you know, for us. Now, some of you may have had some bad experiences with counselors. I mean, people are human, uh, but the counseling is amazing. And we have a counselor promised to us in this passage of Scripture. The A of our ABCs today is the word accept. 
What John tells us is that the world itself cannot accept this counselor. Cannot accept this counselor. I love this picture that Rochelle's found for us, where Jesus just sitting on a park bench, just listening and talking. Don't they look thoroughly engaged with each other? I love that. Just what a great picture. That is truly a counselor. The counselor is the Holy Spirit, but he's in the form of Jesus. He is in the presence of God inside of us, but it is Jesus. They are one in this process, dear friends. Well, the reason the Scripture says the world itself can't receive the counselor is that you have to become spiritual to receive this counselor you have to become spiritual and to do that you have to follow the roman road now i've used this a number of times some of you remember out of the book of romans romans three twenty three: all have sinned and come short of the glory of god every one of us we've all made mistakes romans six twenty three: the wages of these sins is death separation from God, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 5 verse 8, while we were yet sinners in our sinful state, Christ died for us. I mean, he didn't wait for us to ask him to. He died for us a long time ago. And then Romans chapter 10 verse 9, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that it's real, that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. You shall be saved. So you've got to step into that mode for the counselor to come because Jesus said, when I come into your heart, I will send the counselor to you. I will send the counselor to you. You must choose this experience. He's not going to take away your decision. You must choose to become spiritual. And when you do that, it does not mean that life is going to be a rose garden. Doesn't mean everything's going to be a okay that you're going to have heaven on earth. Many times the Lord has to get our attention and our journey, and according to the New Testament, He chastises us. Just like a good parent would chastise a child if they were getting too close to touching something they shouldn't touch. We should say, don't touch that. And if they keep on, we should go and keep them from touching that because they don't understand in their young age that they will get hurt. Now, there's wonderful stories in the Bible about that. We preached on this a couple weeks ago about Jonah and the whale that Jacob was talking about a little while ago. If you remember that uh, he he was thrown out into that tempest, the raging storm of the water. Did you know that if that big fish had not swallowed Jonah, he would have drowned? He could not have survived in that kind of, of, of water, that tempest. He would not have survived. So the terror that swallowed him was also his salvation. And maybe for someone in the room today, the struggle that you're in, as crazy as it may sound, may also in the long run be your salvation. Something to ponder. Can you say amen? Amen. The Bible says in the New Testament as well, just take all of your struggles as discipline from the Lord. Take everything that you're experiencing right now with this attitude makes all the difference in the world. Our attitude as discipline, and I don't mean discipline where we're being hurt, you know, physically. The word discipline doesn't mean that. The word discipline means guidance and direction. Take take every, every situation, good or bad, and take it as discipline from the Lord, especially the bad, especially the bad, dear friends. I've thought about the Apostle Paul. In Acts chapter 9, it talks about how that he was knocked off his horse. And there are some people that God, to get their attention, has to literally knock them off their horse. And it's because he loves them. And I was reading through that passage and and this verse, and it always was interesting to me. So I did some research on it uh, because I used to read it out of the King James Version, the old Bible, you know. And uh, in chapter 9 of Acts, God speaks to Paul, and he says, Paul, it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. And many of you, if you remember the King James Version, you think, what in the world? But like so many times, we say, well, it's the Bible, and we're not meant to understand everything. And we go on without finding out what's going on. What that actually is, is the ox plow of that day. And many times an old ox wants to do what an ox wants to do. But there was devices on the plow that had some point shards, pointed shards on there, that if the ox was not doing what you wanted to do, you could kick it, and it would stick into the ox a little bit, and, he, and he'd start going the direction you wanted him to go. 
Paul, it's hard for you. It's hard. Some of us, it's hard. Sometimes we just need a kick out the door. Amen? Now, we don't like that, but God loves us enough. If that's what we need, that's what he'll give to us. I think you call that tough love, don't you? Amen? The B of our ABCs is just the word, the verb, be. It is. It says in this passage that if you ask for this counselor, that he will be in you. Not just with you, and not just you with him. He will be in you. It, that's where when you say Jesus came into my heart, I asked him to forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. This counselor who Jesus sends comes in and lives inside of you. This spirit, this presence, this love of God just comes and makes his home inside of our, our, our life, our spirit, our intellect, our mind. I mean, in, in, inside of us, you see. The Apostle Paul, as he grew in his faith, he said, you once were in darkness, but now you have come into the light. And then as he progressed even more in his faith, as you read through the scriptures, he says, once you were darkness, but now you have literally become the light. It takes possession of who you are, you see. I remember a good while back, someone said, Eddie, they said, you talk so much about fried chicken. I said, really? I know y'all don't think that, you know. He said, do you, just, do you just say that to get everybody laughing, you know, to put some humor in the sermon? I said, well, I do say that for humor. He said, you really don't like it as much as you say, do you? I mean, he said, that's kind of strange if you really did. And I remember telling him, I said, I really do. <laughs> I really do. I'm admitting that. It is who I am. It's just something I love, you know. And there's no beefs about it. It's just who I am. Last night... Uh, I mentioned to you earlier that we were doing uh, the renewal of, of Amy and David's uh, uh, wedding uh, vows. And we were on the uh, right south of St. Augustine on the coast. And they had their, a good friend of their childhood to share. And it was so moving. Everybody was crying. But they, and they kept saying the wind was blowing sand in everybody's eyes, you know. But it was so moving. Um, and I know that Richard Pett got some great pictures of that. It was very emotional. Afterwards, I went up to the young man and I said, that was fantastic. I said, thank you. That's just so moving for all of us. And he said, it came from my heart. And I said, that's why it was fantastic. Because it was real. You will become the light. It's who you are. It's who you are. You enter into his presence. I'll tell you why the praise team and band were playing a little while ago. Man, I was just absorbing the goodness of God and all of those songs and entering in, entering into the presence of God. You know, it's just who we are. The C of the ABCs today, dear friends, is the word commandments. It opens up. What an interesting verse, verse 15. If you love me, Jesus said, keep my commandments. Now, I like to, to break Jesus' commandments just into three. And we are to initiate forgiveness. That's a big one. Ini not just forgiveness, initiate forgiveness, even if it's not our fault, and it usually never is. Somebody say amen. It's not our fault, you know, you're just being a good guy, a good gal, you know. But initiate forgiveness. Go the extra mile. That's truly a sign of Christ. Go the extra mile. And then the third one, turn the other cheek. I mentioned in a small group this last week, I said, here's an idea. Think of this. I said, it's a new definition of turning the cheek. I said, don't run away. Now think about that for a minute. Chew on that sandwich for a little while. Don't run away. In other words, you could fall down and play dead, or you could run away from the problem. But if you stay there, now you may have to dodge a little bit, you know. They may slug you again. The idea of turning the other cheek, you're staying at the table. You're staying at the table. Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandments. You say, I can't do that. Yes, you can. Yes, you can, because you are the light. 
It's not just in you, it's who you are. You become baptized in His love. Baptized. I remember, you know, when, and that's all it is, is just, you, you have this desire to be saved. You realize you can't save yourself. You realize that you're a sinner. Folks, we are sinners. We've all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. We don't deserve good things from God. You realize that. And then you, you ask the Lord to save you. And, and he fills you with love. That's what John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, meant when he said, baptized in the Spirit, baptized in love, and that assurance. I know that he loves me and he forgave even me. Even me. I love the way John Wesley emphasizes that. Even me. I mean, he shouldn't have forgiven me, but he did. That's, that's the idea and that's the joy of our salvation. Have you been baptized in that love, the love of Christ? I remember when that first overwhelmed me years ago. I was just in love with all my church family like never before. You know, I just wanted to hug them. You know, and they said, get off me, Eddie. I want to hug you again. You know, I love you, love you, love you. It was just overwhelming, just this presence of God. You know, that's what it's all about. It's about love. We have to submit to God as our counselor. We're married to him. And it's, it's hard sometimes. Let me give you three words of the Lord to give to you to close. When I was thinking about counselors, first one came to my mind in the Old Testament was Jethro. How that Moses was having some difficulties when the people were coming out of Egypt to take them to the promised land. He didn't know what to do, so he went to his father-in-law for advice. Somebody in this room is needing advice from a family member. And I want you to heed it. You don't have to do what they say, but I want you to take it more serious than you're taking it. And trust that maybe the Lord right now is giving you a word. The second counselor that the Lord laid on my heart was Nathan, who came to King David after David fell into terrible sin of adultery and murder. And Nathan was the one who confronted him. There's somebody in the room right now that somebody is in the process of confronting you, and you're just saying, it's not my fault. Nope, not me. I don't want to hear it. I want you to consider listening. Again, they may be wrong, but at least you may be the person God is trying to say, just listen. Sometimes the rebuke, chastisement, is from the Lord. And then the last one that came to me as I was praying was Naomi. We always hear the story of Ruth and her faithfulness to God. But her mother-in-law is the one who guided her in how to approach Boaz that ended up being her husband. And of course, that became the lineage that Jesus comes from. She listened to tradition. Tradition in this day and age has a bad, a bad name. Like, you know, we want to do everything new. Everything is new and improved. Everything is faster. I mean, if anything takes more than a moment, it's not fast enough. Got to do something more sleek, more cool, more wonderful, you know. But listen to me. Tradition. Sometimes our elders know what they're talking about. Amen. Sometimes they do. <laughs> I was hoping I'd get the amen from a younger person than that. Dude. That's it. But I appreciate that, Joanne. <laughs> and Joanne's very young. I want to say that correctly, okay? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, and somebody may be facing that right now. You have somebody, an elder that, from the, and you're saying, tradition, uh, you know, things have changed. How many times have we heard that? It's just things are different today. Y yes, and things will be different tomorrow, but there's some things like wise counsel that never changes. If you just listen, you don't have to do it. Just listen and see if God isn't giving you a word today. I, these are the three kingdoms. I know this is for somebody, so take it. Take it. This is directly from God. Take it. It may be just for you. Can you say amen? amen? Heavenly Father, we love you so much. Thank you, Lord, for being our counselor even today. Even today. Guide us now, Lord, as we have the close of our service. We ask for your blessings. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, folks, just, just as we're closing, don't don't let those thoughts that you've felt and experienced over the last few moments just go away. In a minute, you're going to be greeting people and loving on people and going to the Welcome Center and all that kind of stuff. But right now, just take a moment. Did the Lord speak to you today? Did the counselor 
You might say, well, I thought counselors just listen. God's listening to you all the time. Maybe on Sunday mornings, he's trying to tell you something. Maybe he's trying to tell you something. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Make a commitment that say, Lord, I'm going to be busy in a few minutes. But this afternoon, I commit to you. I'm going to go back to you about this issue. Remind me of it, Lord. Don't let me forget. In Jesus' name, amen.